car dealer from Kansas. And I am Miguel Llorente, a traveler and filmmaker from Spain. Together, we created... Future Classics While the term is often used in Craigslist ads justifying a ridiculous asking price for their grandmother's Ford Granada, car enthusiasts often give this topic serious thought. When I attended a classic car auction at the 2011 Amelia Island Concours, a car stopped me dead in its tracks, and the story made me ponder Future Classics. The Tucker Torpedo has a turbulent story, one I could go on for hours about like my grandfather did, but to sum it up, it was a funky car. A funky car with a rear-mounted helicopter engine that managed over 20 miles per gallon. A funky car so far ahead in terms of aerodynamics, suspension, safety, and just about everything else. The big three out of fear actively sabotaged the company. After a year, the Tucker Corporation was down for the count, with only 51 models ever assembled. Long after these cars were forgotten, a car nut bought this sad-looking example for a song in the 1950s and stashed it away. Fifty years later, it sold before my very eyes for almost $800,000. This got me thinking about future classics in my own time. What car right now is totally forgotten? becoming increasingly scarce, and has the uniqueness and rarity to be desirable when I start wearing diapers again. Miguel was very keen to the idea, and we decided to choose our own future classics, trek 2,000 miles to the 2012 Amelia Island Concours, and figure out who picked the better car. Imagine a car that thinks for you interacts with you. Through a touchscreen interface, you and the car become one. Climate control, engine diagnostics, scheduling, trip calculating, all are at the tips of your fingers. While the future is not now, actually, the future is in 1989. If you were to walk into a new car showroom today, looking for this kind of design, engineering, practicality, and technology, you'd be paying well north of $50,000. When Cadillac decided to bring back its convertible for the first time in 20 years, rather than going with in-house GM designers, they decided to go with Pina Farina. Cadillac has a long history with Italian coach builders, but nevertheless, this really ticked off the in-house designers. They thought that they could design a better Italian car than the Italians themselves. Every bit of engineering, design, and technology they could think of went into this car. It beats the Elante in every single way. Looks, comfort, practicality, reliability, technology, it just can't touch it. They built a car that was perfect for Europeans, but the Americans didn't know what to do. All this car needed to be a DeLorean or a Ferrari 308 was a movie or a TV show behind it. I am convinced that this car would have a cult following if they just invested in a little product placement in a TV show. It took only three short years for the Riata to become extinct and forgotten. So, Buick customers had resort to little blue pills for arousal. For this 96,000 mile, very, very nice sort of example. I only paid $2,500. 30 years from now, what will it be? 25,000? 250,000? I don't know. I'm confident my car will not only make it with ease, but be a great contender as a future classic. Miguel, on the other hand, I can only wonder what dinosaur turd he has brought for us. This is a 1970 Volvo P1800, which is engineers called a sort of a souped-down Ferrari. 
you can get a nice one for under $10,000, which is quite a fraction of what a Ferrari should go for, and also far more dependable than a Ferrari. Volvo has a reputation for very boxy, practical cars, and seeing something like this would surprise us. This model was designed by Carrozzeria Ghia in Italy, hence the lines, hence the supremely smooth styling compared to its boxy counterparts. Not only having a wonderful history full of British legends and spies and television, the Volvo P1800 also holds the record for the most miles ever put into a car. Currently, a retired science teacher in upstate New York holds the record with 2.8 million miles up to date. Pretty remarkable in my opinion for a car that you can get under 10 grand. With styling like this, I was sure I would perform well in the competition. However, no competition is complete without meeting your contender. Huh, contender my ass. Miguel, prepare to be conquistador. Okay, so I thought that we should bring Italian cars here. Yeah, that was the object since we were going to look at Italian cars featured at the Million Island Concours, but uh, obviously it's not possible on our budget <laughs> to do it, huh? What do we have here? Uh, I'm guessing a Volvo, huh? 1970 Volvo P1800. Well, I would have thought 50s out of the fins. That's kind of out of place, isn't it? Mine has the pedigree of a TV show behind it, The Saint in the 60s with Roger Moore. I don't think I can say the same about yours. No, it needed to be in a TV show. Um, it deserves it. It would be uh, equally to DeLorean. It's better than a DeLorean in every way. And if it did have a show, it would be a rock star right now. And define cheap. How much did you pay for this car? 5,900 quid. Bullshit. What did you actually pay for this car? 5,900 quid. 5,900 quid. I thought you said 1,500. There's the accent playing and I thought he was messing with me. I paid $2,500. Which car is in better condition? Yours. Which car is ready to go cross country and I'm going to be comfortable and sane at the end of it? Yours. Which one may be a better choice? Mine. While I kept making an excellent case for my Riata, and Miguel's Volvo kept leaking every fluid possible on my showroom floor, I wondered if a rational thought would ever stumble out of his crazy Spanish noggin. Oh, you surely cannot compete with the bulletproof B20 engine. The one with the most miles holds a record for 2.8 million miles on this engine. That's right, I do remember reading that. But I like, I like your seats. I like your seats a lot. Yeah, uh, let's see. You got some work to do, man. Uh, we're going to a concour and doing concour judging levels. And uh, this is not a concour car, nor is it original Survivor. I can tell it's, it's been painted. Elbow grease, everything. Elbow grease. But soon I found his Achilles tendon. Okay. Oh boy, what? how come you didn't pop your headlights? This pop out now? This. They do, and they work, kind of. Um, they oh. Just do a little help. There we go. Eh. They need a little help. Eh, uh, well, with the wind, when you're going 40 miles an hour or 60 or whatever, pop right up. <laughs> it's, it's just a little <laughs> thing. It's just a little thing. Um, well, how about yours? Everything working, I assume? What are the gauges by? Oh, gauges by Smith, so uh -oh. none of them work, correct? Quite, kind of a ticking time bomb there, but they uh -huh. work. Uh -huh. Some of them work. The important ones work, except mm. for fuel and uh, oil temperature, but everything else works. Okay, so if my car is so shabby as you say, how, is, how are these two cars going to be judged in Amelia Island? Well, what's going to judge them? is right now they have a certain appreciation level. They're both low, but 30 years from now, which one is going to be more appreciated? It doesn't have to be 
in a monetary sense, but which one is more likely to be uh, at Amelia Island, where we're going? And uh, I don't think anyone else can uh, answer this question except people who are participating in it. And it's a good reason to go. Any reason to go to the Amelia is good for me. <laughs> for me too, so let's go hit the road. Sounds good. Will Miguel's bucket make it cross country? And will Tyler stop wearing that ridiculous jacket? Find out next week on Open Roads. Mm -hmm.